All right, day two. Let's see if we can get this BIOS completed because we're going to need the BIOS to do anything and as soon as we start up the BDOS we're going to need to make uh, disk calls so this is a prerequisite. I've also done a whole bunch of uninteresting cleanup including renaming things, a few comments and uh, generally restructuring a few things. Okay so the way we're going to do this is well, we could call the MOS APIs to read and write sectors of disk. This would require us to emulate an actual disk, which is perfectly possible in BM. Uh, it's got robust functionality for it, but it'd be so much easier not to. So what we're going to do is put a CPM file system uh, in the virtual file system in the emulator as a file. In fact, I've done that. So here you can see we have now have three files: uh, boot, which is the BIOS, BDOS, which is the BDOS we did last time, and CPMFS, which is a CPM file system. And this is it. So what we're going to do is. As part of our initialization, uh, let's do that here. We want to open the file and store the file handle. MOS has a decent random access file API. Uh, this thing we did last time when loading the BDOS is its non random access file API where it loads and saves complete files. So we're actually going to do CPMFS file name, right, CPMFS 13, and we are going to call a function called ozfind, which is at FFCE. don't know why that is all in red. I think Vim is confused about yeah, the file type. Okay. So to use ozfind, you specify a function code in A and a pointer in XY, and it will open the file and return you a file handle. So this is very easy. I think X is the looks like the high byte. Y is the low byte. So this should give us our file handle. I don't know what it does on error. It will either return an error code or throw an exception. Uh, return zero if the file does not exist. Okay, it'll return an error code. Well, we can't be bothered to actually handle errors, so this is going to be... We're just going to store the file handle, and we need to create a... Uh, a variable for that. So that's what we do for setup. Now we're going to actually want to start trying to read and write it. Uh, this means we're actually going to need to start doing some entry points. 
let's uh, a lot of these are trivial so let's just do some of the trivial ones so we've got these four these get and set the various values for the memory window so get TPA we are going to store this is the memory base. The memory base is come on, mem base ldx mem end. Yep, like that. That's all it is. Uh, get zp is similar. Base ldx end. Set tpa is going to be the opposite. This allows the BDOS to update the valid memory window. In fact, we're going to need to add some of that in a moment to the BDOS. Okay. Uh, we've done con in and con out. A const is uh, this is console status is checking to see if uh, there is anything pending and there is a call for that uh, there should be somewhere in the documentation this is uh, so in BBC Basic, this is a. None of this is actually what I'm looking for. Uh, there is a call called in key, uh, input key, which can poll the keyboard. And I was there is a reference somewhere in this website describing what it does. Oh, here we go. Here we go. In key calls Osbyte eight one. Read key with time limit. Uh, this waits for a character from the current input stream or tests for a key press on the keyboard. We actually want to, to scan for any key. Uh, this is annoying. I don't to actually think there's a way of doing this. This is the if you pass a negative number to in key and therefore the system call that actually implements it, you can test for a particular key being pressed. But I don't think there isn't any key number. This is the one I would expect for any key but Sorry, this is the one for any key. But I am not, it says it's rarely implemented. Great. Okay, we're going to have to do this the hard way. And the hard way is that we actually have to implement entry con in. So we are going to have to, when uh, when somebody calls console status, we're going to have to read key with time limit. If a key is returned, then we can't don't want to return it immediately, but we want to store it for the next call to con in.
in the pending key variable. So when somebody calls con in, we load the value of pending key. If it is not zero, that is, there is a pending key, then uh, we reset the value of pending key, that should be ASTX, and return the value. If it is zero, we call the real system call and return that. So console status, therefore, is going to be Console status is const return status in A. Zero if no character is ready, ff is if one is. So if pending key is not zero, this means someone's previously called const and read a key. So if it's not zero, Uh, we want to return ff if there is no pending key then we actually want to call the system call which is osbyte eight one uh, the argument passed in x y is sign sixteen bit value which is the timeout a is the function code if the carry is set then there is no key So if carry set to no. So if we get here, if carry is clear, then x is the character we've just read. So we want to store that in pending key and then fall through to the yes code. So that's an annoying piece of code. How big is our BIOS? 328 bytes. Hmm. Remember, we have 1K to deal with for this. I mean, this won't be a problem. We've got loads of space here. The BBC Micro BIOS is very small. So that gives us everything except the disk functions. So the way these work is in order to read and write from the disk, you call set track, set sector, set DMA, uh, and then one of read or write. Uh, all these functions take a 16-bit parameter. So set track, set sec, set DMA, they just store a value in memory somewhere. Read and write actually does the work. So we can actually implement this. As that. Uh, now, because these take 16-bit parameters, that allows uh, up to 64,000 tracks and 64,000 sectors, although the latter is somewhat unusual.
However, in CPM80, it's the BDOS that does the work of uh, translating file system block numbers into absolute sector count from the beginning and it then splits these up into track and sector and this is both a annoying chunk of code and not necessarily very useful the reason for not being useful is that on many systems the back end the BIOS here actually wants to know the absolute sector number so splitting these up just means that the BIOS has to do more work putting them back together again also a CPM sector is 128 bytes regardless of how big the actual platform sector is for example on a PC sectors are 512 bytes on CPM and MOS sectors are 256 bytes so you have to lie to the BIOS uh, the, you have to lie to the BDOS about how many sectors and tracks there are anyway so I think that I'm going to make an executive decision and change the API so that uh, that header in that's better so that instead of having set track and set sec we just have a single set sec call that takes as a parameter a absolute sector number I'm kind of also thinking about the Commodore 64 here because Commodore 64 disk drives are weird uh, they they're triangular the disk images have different number of sectors depending what track you're on. They did this to try and make better use of the disk space. Uh, of course, as disks are physical spinning objects, uh, the outer rings on the disk are smaller than, so are bigger than the ones on the inside and therefore can store more data. But it also means that there's no hope of the BDOS being able to properly calculate the track and sector numbers. So we are going to implement this as So, because we can't supply a 24-bit uh, a number through the normal function parameters, we're going to have to pass in a pointer. And we're going for three bytes because CPM file systems support a maximum of uh, 64,000 disk blocks. And a disk block, we'll talk about later, can be, it's usually 1 or 2K. Uh, the BDOS is then going to calculate the sector number from the block number by multiplying it and uh, a let's take a 4k sector a 4k block has got 32 uh, CPM sectors in it so we're turning a 16-bit value into that we're multiplying a 16-bit value by 32 therefore the maximum it can possibly be is 3 bytes 24 bits uh, 24 bits also gives us uh, be, be this many sectors total which is this many bytes total, which is four gigabytes. Two, two gigabytes. 
Yes. It's quite early in the morning, can you tell? So, we are going to want to put in a I think the syntax is three. Yes. So we're going to want to store this. So this will be, try to remember how to do this in loops. Uh, Uh, XA is a pointer, so we're going to want to store this in one of our pointer temporaries. Like so, so load the value, store the value, decrement Y. We're doing this in reverse because this allows us cheap loops with decrement decrement sets the Z and N flags. N means negative. So we do that. So uh, branch if positive, is that, did I get the right? Yep, that is correct. Branch if positive will branch if the value in Y is not negative. So 0, 1, or 2. So first loop round, we write offset 2, then offset 1, then offset 0, then we stop. And this should be set sec, not set track. OK. So read and write. To read and write, we are going to call Mosser's random access functions that is os gub pub get byte put byte and as is common with a lot of MOS stuff this takes a disk uh, a control block and irritatingly this then updates all the values in the control block so we're going to have to rewrite the whole thing every time It'd be really nice if we could just poke the values directly into the control block uh, up here and not have to worry about this. But we're going to have to do this. So this can be in VSS. And it wants to be OD long. So up here in read and write, we are going to want to firstly clear the control block, just to make sure there is nothing in it. There's actually a few bytes that won't change, but let's just be careful. than the value, load A with 0, store a 0 into the block, decrement A, loop, return. You do this a lot on the 6002. So first thing, clear the control block. Actually, actually, after clearing the control block, we then want to write all our disk parameters into it. But as these are the same for read and write, we can do this 
down here in a piece of common code. So load the file handle, store it in offset zero. Load the uh, the uh, DMA address, low byte, store that at offset one, high byte, offset two, uh, count is always going to be 128 bytes. That is one CPM sector. That goes in plus five. And offset is going to be our logical sector number. Shifted left because of the size of CPM sectors. So this is going to be slightly exciting. Let's see how to do this. So high byte. Do you want to do high byte? So we have our sector number is like that, thinking of 32 bit values. We actually want to shift this so it's basically. We want to shift left by seven bits, but this is equivalent to shifting right, shifting left by eight bits, and then shifting right by one bit. So we actually do want to start at the bottom. This wants to go in at nine. Like so. Uh, we're going to turn this into a loop in a moment. But we now want to shift everything. So that will be. We do want to start shifting from the top. So that will be. That will be. Is this rotate right through carry? It is rotate right through carry. So we shift the top byte right by one. That shifts the bottom bit into the carry. That then allows us to shift the, uh, the medium byte right by one, uh, the, the bit that got shifted out in the previous byte gets shifted in, and it also shifts another byte out, so that will be plus nine, plus eight. Each of these are three bytes, so we can actually optimize into our usual loop. So this will be uh, plus y plus, block plus 
y dy branch if positive to the previous label. And likewise here, we actually have to, it doesn't matter what order we do this, this is just a copy. This has to be in the right order. So we're going to have to count down. Of course, the other question is, raw doesn't let you index off y, but it will let you index off x. So we're going to do that. Okay. So this should have initialized our control block ready to actually do the work. So we want to read bytes using the file pointer. Uh, the our MOS maintains a current file pointer in the usual way most operating systems do. Uh, you can specify a pointer if you want, and depending what call you use, it will either honor it or use the internal one. So read bytes using pointer is three. Do the call and that's basically all we need to do. So this returns 0 for OK, 1 for an error, FF if the media changed. But we can't detect FF. MOS returns an error in the carry flag. So we're just going to reset a Rotate the carry into A, this will give us a 0 or 1 and return. And we need to uh, put the address of Oz Gubpub FFD1. Okay, and likewise for write, this is exactly the same code, except we are doing a write with pointer, which is a one. And as this code is all common, going to do that. So I think that is all our BIOS entry points. And we're not using our print H8 routine anymore, so we can delete it. But I'm going to leave it in for the time being, because I'm sure we're going to be needing to do debugging, particularly of this stuff. Yikes. Okay, so how big is our BIOS now? 419 bytes, which is not a lot. Uh, actually, it's using a bit more because we've got uh, variables in BSS. Um, did I remember to enable the map? I did not remember to enable the map. So this is going to be uh, map. Okay. So we should now have a we should have a BIOS map. No, that should be an image. Yep. So 
So this this has created a map file that describes the layout of this particular module, and this lets us see that uh, our BSS size, our BSS ends at 5B8. So we are still slightly under half full because this our memory area goes from 400 to 800. Okay, well, let's just run it. I don't expect anything to happen. Bad name. Ooh, see, this is why we test things. This suggests that our call to OzFind is throwing an error. That would be this. And that will be because I probably got the x, y. x is the high byte. Okay, I did get that right. CPMFS file name is, yeah, that's a file name. And we are calling Oz find. CPMFS is there, that's in lowercase, but uh, most file systems are not case sensitive. So what doesn't it like about this? Does that need to be zero terminated? I don't believe so. I think Moss is pretty consistent. It doesn't actually say. I think it's pretty consistent about wanting uh, ca carriage return terminated file names. I do have a notice that this is storing the file name in the other direction. So I have a feeling this ought to be YX, not XY. Let's just try flipping these and seeing what happens. Yep, that works. Okay, that's a bug in the documentation. Uh, I should probably fix that. Anyway, that does seem to be working, so let us commit it. And let's get on with the BDOS. Because this is where all the actual logics are going to be. So there's some stuff we need to do. Normal CPM80, uh, there is no BDOS configuration. It just, when it's loaded off disk, it's pre-configured. Uh, we are going to have to do some. Uh, we're only, only ever going to be using the initialization code once on system startup, which again is unlike real CPM. So it'd be nice to be able to get rid of the initialization code. So one of the things we're going to have to do on startup is tell the BIOS how much memory we're using. Um, and we have, because the, the BIOS doesn't know, so I thought we had some code that did this, to be honest. Uh, yeah, this stuff. So this is going to be zero page size. And we also want uh, 
we want to know how big our complete memory allocation is. Of course, we've been fixed up, so So at the end of the file, we want to align to a page boundary So now we can do end minus start to figure out how much, uh, how big the entire BDOS is. But first, let's do the zero page. So this gives us the zero page bounds in A and X. Add on how much zero page we're using to the base. And write it back. And likewise, we do the same thing with the TPA. This is all in page sizes. So we add on the number of pages that the BDOS is using. And write it back. And that doesn't work. Why doesn't that work? It doesn't work because zero page size is a 16-bit value and we want the low byte of it. Actually, does that work? Not conveniently. So that should be one of these. And this will, the same thing applies here. Segment BSS isn't aligned properly. The resulting executable. Uh. Does this work in the depend on the final address of the segment? It expects the segment to be aligned to a multiple of the alignment. That's not helping. That's not how a line should work. So what a line normally does, it inserts bytes until the code pointer is correctly aligned. But uh, of course, I don't think this assembler can do that due to the way segments work. So we're going to have to do this the hard way. called L D sixty five. There we go. So if we set define equals yes in the linker script, it will insert uh, symbols to let us figure out the position and size of all the segments. But we can't just ask for the BSS size because we want to know the size of the entire executable. So I think we want Actually, I think there may be an easier way to do this. Can we tell the linker to insert a symbol? I'm not sure if we can actually.
Yeah, I'm not sure we can. So this should be the address of the BSS. This should be the size of the BSS. This should be the address of the beginning of our code. So what we need to do here is This gives us the address of the end of the BSS. This gives us the total number of bytes from the beginning of the code to the end of the BSS. But we now want to round up And this will give us the low byte. So hopefully that will do it. Uh, so the assembler will give us a listing but it won't show us the values because it won't know the values until actual execution time. So let's execute. So break at 1900, continue, go. That didn't break. That's because we don't actually start execution at 1900, we start execution at 1903. Go, there we go. Uh, that suggests an error happened. Already open. Oh, when I did shift break, it didn't close the file. So I have to do control break. <laughs> I can't do control break because uh, that the break key is mapped to F12 on my keyboard and control F12 does something in my window manager. So there should be a, there we go. So now I can do shift break. Right, and we break at the right place. So store the BIOS entry point pointer. Update the memory region. Uh, is there a step but treater called subroutines one step? Okay. So we now have the memory, the zero page memory region in the registers, which is from four to nine zero. So we want to add on the number of zero, the amount of zero page that the BDOS is using, which is currently zero, and set it. And here we do memory. And that, yep, from one nine, the address we're currently running to seven C. And we're adding on to F. That's a lot. See, I would expect this to be one currently. We want the high byte, not the low byte. Step, 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 step. Here we go, add one. And then we write that back. 
So this means that we can now load programs starting at 2.0 that is safely above the BDOS. Uh, I'll also say, I don't think I actually uh, said this out loud last time, but the reason we're doing it like this, and not just linking everything together statically, is we want to be able, we want the BDOS here, and the CCP when we do that, to be completely uh, platform independent. Like, you can just drop the binary in from one platform to another on the BBC Micro or the C64 or whatever, and it'll work. So it does need to figure all this out at runtime. The only bit that you should actually have to write is the BIOS. And as we've seen, there's very little in the BIOS. Okay. So, So after we've done that bit of initialization, we then get you then fall through into the warm start code. And this is where stuff actually begins to happen. Uh, this is CPM system call zero. This is the thing you call to exit a program. And it's the job of this code to reload the CCP because the user program may have overwritten that. Uh, reset the disk system, uh, not in that order. Uh, <laughs> let me do that again. Reset the disk system, do any initialization that needs doing on every, uh, every command line, which is not a lot. Uh, load the CCP, jump to the CCP. So the first thing we're going to want to do is reset the stack. Then we are going to want to reset the disk system. Now in here I have the uh, an annotated disassembly of the 8080 uh, CPM CCP and BDOS, which I'm going to be using heavily for reference. Uh, now, CPM 80 doesn't work like this. In CPM 80, it's the BIOS's responsibility to load the CCP and BDOS because it's just going to lift them off the, the boot sectors of the disk. We're doing it slightly differently. We're going to be loading the, the CCP off the actual file system. So the first thing we want to do is reset the disk system. CPM doesn't have an awful lot of state. Uh, so between runs, uh, it only really maintains the current directory, well, the, the current user, rather, and the current drive, and that's it, nothing else. So, in CPM80, these are stored down in zero page, which means something different on the 8080 that does on the 6502. But here we're going to put them in the BDOS's own memory uh, it also combines them into one variable
so what are we going to do for our reset well the first thing it does is clear the write protect status uh, you can tell the BDOS not to write to particular disks this is mainly used in the case for disk error the disk is automatically marked as write protect as write protected to avoid corrupting the disk Uh, we also have the login vector which uh, is a bit set of which drives are currently uh, in use the term is logged in it means that the directory of the, the drive has been read and uh, the bitmap computed and I just realized I actually forgot a big chunk of the BIOS, but we'll get onto that in a bit. So, uh, see, I'm just wondering if we want to zero initialize this on every yeah so uh, once again we have our standard loop I was hoping to be able to reuse the zero in the X register, but you can't. You can't do absolute indexed. So we just put X in A, STA, DOS state start Y, D E Y, B P L to the loop. So this will clear all this stuff to zero. We're going to put more things in here. Uh, so. BDOS gets reset after every command but it's slightly more complicated than that because remember the CCP is itself a command and it's when the CCP invokes a program a transient program it is possible for that program to return back to the CCP rather than calling the exit system call uh, this will skip all this initialization because everything will be happening in the context of the CCP. And in fact, we are doing this wrong. going to want to I mean the reset disk stuff is itself a system call uh, we now want to log in drive a uh, this will read the um, read the directory bitmap Uh, drive A, the number of drive A is zero, so we just need to do this. So this should actually assemble. No, it won't.
this this should now assemble. There we go. Okay. So uh is this doing there is a so what yeah this is updating the login vector to say that this drive has been logged in we select it to say that this is the drive that we're currently working on uh, and then we rebuild the bitmap. Uh, let me just look, where is active? Right. Um, the active drive is different from the current drive. The current drive is the one that the user asked for. This is, it's the CPM equivalent of the currently working current working directory. The active drive is the one that we're working on right now. And as that you can like have files open on multiple drives at once, we're going to be constantly switching between active drives. that currently selected drive is not actually correct. This is going to be user drive, which is also, all these terms are overloaded. Uh, user is uh, it's CPM's equivalent of directories. You can split a disk up into multiple users. There are 16 and they're numbered. Um, I'll call that current working drive and this is going to be current working user. The whole user concept is basically broken. It's one of the things in CPM that actually just works badly. Most of CPM is extremely well designed but that is not one of them. So I believe in reset disk now this is the CCP there we go reset disk uh, we are where by writing zero to active drive we are saying we're working on drive a there's also, when you select a drive, there is work that needs to be done. That will happen here. Okay, we are going to have to go back to the BIOS because I forgot to implement one of the most important system calls, which is cell disk. So what what this does is it is called by the BIOS to tell the BIOS what drive we're currently working on. And this will then return a pointer to a structure that defines the disk. Our BIOS here 
has exactly one disk, so if A is not zero, then we fail. And on error, we return zero in the return parameter. So we know that a is 0, so that all we have to do is to set x to 0, 2, and return. Very straightforward. In fact, we can do this the easier way. So here we are going to want to return the DPH. We only have one, so we're going to simply statically if this is like trivial and we return it. Very simple. So the DPH is this structure. Uh, we are copying uh, the CPM2 format. Uh, it contains pointers to various bits of workspace that the BDOS is going to need to use to work on the disk. So for example it's got uh, the address of the definition of the drive that describes the format. Uh, the directory checksum vector is used for detecting disk changes. The allocation vector is the bitmap uh, where the BDOS keeps track of which blocks are in use and so on. Some of this we're not going to use. For example the sector translation table and I'm in two thoughts of whether to get rid of this completely, but this will mean that our DPH will not be the standard format, so I think let's not. It might come in useful later. Uh, dear buff, address of a 1 to 8 byte sector buffer. This is used when scanning the directory. Uh, DPB is appointed to the DPB structure that we're going to work going to define later. Uh, CSV, directory checksum vector. Uh, this is a small buffer used for checksumming the directory. Uh, as it says, if the checksum of a sector changes, then the disk is assumed to be changed. If the disk is not removable, there will be no such buffer. Um, and the allocation vector so we've got the directory buffer, the checksum buffer needs to be I should say how big it has to be somewhere 
each 128 byte record in the directory. So our directory is going to be one block and a block is 1K. We're using this format for now. So this wants to be 24 by 32 long. I'll describe the format, the disk format in a moment. Uh, the allocation vector needs to have one bit for every block on the disk. Uh, that big okay so this is actually quite a lot of buffer space one of the biggest problems with CPM is the allocation vector here uh, the bigger the disk the bigger the allocation vector and uh, if you're using hard disks that are like 32 megabytes you end up with enormous allocation vectors and these have to be in memory all the time and what's worse than that, uh, if you've got multiple drives, they all need allocation vectors in parallel. You can quickly end up using enormous amounts of space for your allocation vectors for multiple drives. Uh, what am I looking at? I want to look at the, the BIOS map. Okay, we're safe. We've used quite a lot of space, but um, actually not as much as all that. I'd probably better check to make sure that this, these maths work. Of course it doesn't say how big the blocks are in the listing, even though it knows at. Yeah, I suppose this is more or less right. So A9 to BD, that's not a lot actually. See, I, I don't know. Well, for a start, my math here might be wrong, but also I don't know uh, how wide CA65's maths are. Expression evaluation, 32 bit. Okay, that should be fine. So, Number of fake tracks, number of fake sectors. Number of bytes in a sector gives us 163,000 bytes on the disk. Divide by the block size, 160 blocks. Add seven, divided by eight gives 20 bytes. Yes, this is a small disk, that's fine. Okay, that all looks reasonable. So now we want to do the DPB. Which is a fixed structure defining a disk format. Let me talk about disk formats. Here is our CPM file system image, what I came up with earlier. It's actually constructed by the make file so that we can easily add files to it. CPM disks are divided into blocks. You have to specify the block size. We are using a 2K. No, we're not. We're using a, a 1K block size. 
uh, the directory appears first on the disk. It is currently two blocks wide. This gives it enough space for, well, this gives it enough space for 64 directory entries. Each directory entry is 32 bytes wide. So here you see we have two directory entries. The first is for a file called nop.com. That is a binary that I produced. Uh, all it does is it exits immediately. It's like the minimum possible program. Uh, we could make one a bit smaller by just putting RTS in, but that would return to the CCP rather than re uh, rather than warm starting the BDOS. Uh, the top row here contains the file name, which is these bytes, which is a standard 8.3 file name structure. Uh, if this looks familiar, it's because DOS got it from CPM. Uh, we have a handful of metadata bytes here. This one indicates the number of records on the disk, uh, sorry, records in the file. A record is 128 bytes. Uh, this one is unused in CPM2. Uh, the tool I'm using to generate the file systems actually sets it to something which is used by CPM3, but we're ignoring that. And these two bytes describe the extent number. And I'll talk about extents later. The second 16 bytes is very simply the list of blocks where you can find the data. So that we can see here that nop.com, there is one allocated block, zeros mean unallocated, and that block is block two. So we can see nop.com's data by going to, that is the size of one block, therefore this is the address of block two which is here. And this is our program. And that is essentially all there is to a CPM file system. There is a wrinkle. The block structure here has got enough space for uh, 16 block numbers for a small disk, uh, where a block number is one byte or eight block numbers for a large disk where a block number is two bytes, thus giving a maximum of 64,000 available blocks. You can have files that are longer than that. And the way CPM deals with this is it simply puts multiple directory entries in the directory representing a file and they're disambiguated by the extent numbers up here. Now, each directory entry is technically called an extent. So that uh, the first 16 blocks are in extent 0. The, the next 16 blocks are in the next extent, and so on. Uh, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that, because technically an extent can contain 8 blocks. And on this disk file system, because a block is one byte, we can actually fit 16 blocks in a directory entry. Therefore, each directory entry contains, logically, two extents, even though a directory entry is called an extent. Yet, yeah, terminology is not brilliant. So, we need to tell CPM all the parameters about the disk that we need to know which is this structure here. So the first word is number of uh, sectors per track, but we're not using tracks, so this is unused. The next one, block shift. This is how many bits left to shift a block number to get a 
record number. So uh, for a 1k block it wants a 3 Let me see, is that right? Block shift to record number A. A record is 128 bytes. Our blocks are 1024 bytes. So how many times do we need to double this? Once, twice, thrice. Yes, that is correct. Uh, the block mask is, I think this is the reverse, hang on, let me just think about this. This is the, when given a sector number, uh, that is an absolute number of sectors from the beginning of the disk, you mask that value with this one, and this uh, tells you which sector within the block you're using. So uh, our block shift is 3, so the block mask is 7, which is 111, which is 3 bits. In fact, these are bytes. Real CPM has a big complicated assembler macro that computes all these values. Extent mask took me ages to figure this out. The description here is complicated, but this basically uh, describes um, how many logical extents there are within a um, within a single directory entry. So because our file system uses two of these, we want a we want this value DSM, number of blocks on the disk. So this is, actually it's this value here. And we want to make this, uh, it's actually the value minus one, so. And again, this, this should all be done with macros. You generate the whole DPH with a macro and it does this for you number of directory entries minus one well that's 63 because it's defined here one min uh, number of directory entries minus one okay directory allocation bitmap the when, it, uh, when the BDOS computes the bitmap of which blocks on the disk are used, you have to tell it that the directory itself is in use. And the way it does this is it writes these two bytes to the bottom of the bitmap before doing the computation. So this, this example down here is saying that it, there are two blocks allocated for the bitmap. So this is actually going to be like so. Check some vector size. Number of directories entries divided by four rounded up. I got this wrong. Uh, 
uh, number of directory entry, hang on, this value is 32, number of directory entries is 64 divided by 4, it's 16 rounded up, okay, this should actually be 16. This will all need clean up eventually. And uh, this last one here is the number of reserved tracks on the disk. This is a constant value that gets added to the track number whenever it's working on the disk. Uh, of course, we are not using track numbers. And our value is zero anyway. But we are going to want to support reserved tracks. So, because our because sectors are 128 bytes, so this will give us up to eight megabytes of available reserved space at the beginning of the disk, which is fine. The reason I'm concerned is that sector numbers are uh, 24 bits, and this is a 16-bit value. But 16 bits gives us enough to be useful. So that's actually brought down the size of our BSS a bit. So the uh, the DPB is down here. Here we go. It starts at this address zero three. Seven uh, extent mask number of blocks on the disk is nine F. Uh, this is uh, this is a eight bit value. Okay, let me say that again. This is a sixteen bit value, but the number of blocks fits in eight bits. This makes it technically a small disk. Uh, which allows us to fit 16 block numbers in the 16 bytes in a directory entry. If this didn't fit in 8 bits, it would make it a large disk and we would have to use 16-bit block numbers. Number of directory entries is here. Allocation bitmap is here. Checksum vector size is here. Number of reserved sectors is here. And Above this, there is the our various pointers. So the DPH starts here. Unused sector translation table. One, two, three words of CPM workspace. Directory buffer at 05D6. DPB at 05BE. Checksum buffer at 0656. Allocation vector at 0666. Good. So now we go back to the BDOS. So here's the code for logging in the disk. this doing shift right is 
look to see what shift right does. Uh, shifts HL right C bits. So that gets the active drive into A. Right, this is deciding whether the... It's looking at the login vector and it's deciding whether this disk is already logged in. Why? If this disk was not already active... Oh, right, here, here's the conditional where it's doing it. Okay. If the drive is it's not already logged in, the bitmap is recomputed. In all cases, the drive is selected. So the way you do this on the 8080 is you load the 16-bit vector, you shift it right uh, by the drive number, thus leaving you with the login bit at the bottom of the 16-bit word. However, we're a 6002. We don't have 16-bit values. Just trying to think, is there a cunning 6002 way of doing this? I don't think there is. So I think let's just define a a general purpose temporary storage thing. to shift the value in temp right by that number of bits. So raw temp plus one, raw temp plus zero, DEY branch if non-zero to there. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bytes. We are going to push that out into a helper routine. So, uh, we now have the bit we're looking for at the bottom of temp zero.
We now want to select the current drive by just doing that. We want to look at uh, this actually returns an error if the drive is unselectable. Yeah, uh, this returns an error if the drive is unselectable, that is, it's not valid. Then we check the bottom bit that we computed here. Why are we doing this first rather than selecting it first? That would seem to make sense as it doesn't require pushing across. Right, because selecting the drive will actually will not update the login vector. Yeah. So in order to test that bottom bit, we're just going to use the same trick that these are using. which is to rotate right the temp zero. Uh, that will put the, uh, the bit we care about into carry, and then we can do a uh, a branch. But we are going to have to check to see whether the drive is selectable. On the 8080 this returns the Z flag, select returns the Z flag if the drive is unselectable. is select a system call. No, it's not. So this is actually not a complicated routine, all we do is we call the BIOS. So this is going to be get the active drive select it Uh, this will return a pointer to the DPB in a X. We want to test to see whether these are both zero. I am thinking that that's not a very useful call signature. It would actually, you see, on the 8080, you can very easily OR together two registers. That's why it returns Z. It just ORs uh, the two pointer bytes together, and you know, is that a zero? Ah, oh, there's actually quite a lot more code here than I was looking at. Um, 
but the 6402 you can't actually do that so I think rather than returning a zero let's just set the carry because we can do that in a single byte So if carry is set, then we just return. So then what the BDOS is doing is it's pulling information out of that structure and stashing it in local storage. Uh, the 8080 can't do uh, pointer indirection, can't do pointer indexing very well. Uh, the 6402 is much better at that, but I don't think it's enough better that we can just keep track of, that we just store the pointer. So let's actually copy the values. Uh, we are going to steal this. It's the DPH copy. So XA now contains a pointer, which we stick in temp. And then we do our loop as normal. much that 80 code uh, temp is I did say it was zero page
didn't use zero page addressing for temp. Why is it not doing that? It knows that this is in zero page. Does it know it's in zero page? Do I need to put this at the top? Yes, I do. Okay. There we go. It's now using zero page. So this copies the entire DPH. is also going to be copying the DPB. Which makes sense. So we have to do exactly the same thing here. bytes check some vector size is a word reserve sectors is a word okay copy dpb into local storage So we set up our pointer and we do a copy loop. Right. Now, there is one additional piece of logic in this code which is checking the disk size. Uh, 
what this is going to be doing is looking at the blocks on disk hi word and using that if that's non-zero then it knows that this is a big disk thinking okay check to see if this is a big disk you see I wondering I don't think I actually need this at all because we can do this uh, we load the high byte and if we go look at LDA in the 602 we want LDA absolute. This is not the right place. Here we go. This sets the Z flag. So just loading this will then allow us to do. Uh, is it a zero? It's a small disk. So I don't actually think we need a separate big disk flag. So I think we're good. And so we are selecting the drive. Now we want to go back to login and do more of that. Remember what the it also doesn't help that I keep mistyping shift G and I go to the end of the file rather than the beginning. So login drive. Is this a newly activated drive? Decide if the drive is already logged in. So We're also going to change Shift R to make it smaller. So we're using XA as a pointer, because this means that we can save four bytes storing into temp. Let's do this. Because thinking are we using set bit in more than one place yes we are because we're doing stuff with bitmaps so I was going to produce a a set bit function that sets a bit in XA but I think 
think that I actually want a set bit function that uses a pointer Doing this, whoops, doing this is actually four bytes. We could use a helper because a call to a helper would be three bytes, but honestly, it's not worth it. Hmm. I was thinking, how is this actually going to work? Setting a bit and a 16 bit value. Uh, there's a. There is a bit. Instruction. This does not do what we want. Yes, uh, the 65CO2 has opcodes for setting and resetting bits, but the 6502 does not. So I th think. We need two code paths for high and low So this is, I think, more annoying than it looks. Also, I've noticed that my shift right here is wrong because we are post decrementing Y. This means that if Y is goes in as zero, which it will be when we're dealing with drive zero, then we will still shift by one. So we actually want to do Uh, so we compare y to zero if y is naught exit now nah, that's terrible what I'm concerned about is that this is going to take uh, four bytes for these two instructions plus another three bytes at the bottom for the jump back to the beginning. You ought to be able to do better than that. Uh, we can decrement Y here.
So we still have our own irritating jump. But I think we've saved one bite. And also looking at the original code, I see there is actually a corresponding shift L. So let's do that. This is all exactly the same code. However, rather than rolling right from left to right, we actually want to roll left from right to left. And because these are next to each other, we can share some code. OK. So this actually gives us a way to do our set bit. We are. We are actually changing temp to be four bytes long. We're storing our pointer in the upper two bytes of temp. We then We put a 1 into temp plus 0, which then allows us to shift it left by y. And we're now going to or in the shifted value using a loop and exit. Now that's some grim code. And it seems wrong to use a loop for two iterations, but this is uh, six bytes. And if we wanted to unroll it, we still need to use Y because we need to use pointer in direction here. So each iteration would be eight bytes and this way the second iteration cost is only three bytes. Right, well... Okay. We have set the login vector bit. And we've written a whole bunch of useful stuff that we're going to use later.
So the next thing is to update the bitmap for the current drive. Now, how many places is this used? Once, as far as I can tell. So, Uh, there's also this does another thing. It also looks for files beginning with dollar signs. This is used for running scripts. Uh, so what this is going to do is it's going to iterate through the directory, reading all the directory entries, and um, setting the bits in the bitmap to mark which blocks are in use. Let me just look at some of this code. So looking at our tables down here, the, the allocation vector, I'm just going to call that bitmap. I don't have my That's better. So the first thing we're going to do is to zero the bitmap. We want to round up So we now want to copy the pointer into the second temp register. And zero it. Problem is the bitmap can be bigger than eight So we can't use indexing. The 602 X and Y registers are 8 bits wide. So if you want to index with 16 bits, we have to do it the long way.
Um, and so this writes a let me put that here actually. This writes a single zero to uh, our bitmap pointer. Then it adds one to the pointer. And now we want to decrement one from the bitmap length. Uh, of carry. And Okay, so this is our 16-bit reset loop thing. So we've zeroed the table. Uh, we now want to copy So we actually want to copy, put the pointer right back again. And our usual loop for copying a 16-bit value. Oops, that should be a comma y. Okay, so we've done with the initialization. Uh, I'm getting increasingly worried about this exit because 6002 branches are limited to plus and minus about 128 bytes. So once we have more than that amount of code in here, that branch won't be able to reach the exit. But at least we'll get an error when that happens. So we now get to the point where we actually start having to read the disk. How is this working? So, uh, the BDOS seems to use, remember these three scratch entries. It seems to use scratch two and scratch three consistently to indicate where the disk's head is. Let's just go through this code and looking for it. Track pointer, track number, track number. Oh, it's even commented. That's useful. So we're actually going to rename that as, well, 
I would say last selected track and sector, but we don't have tracks and sectors anymore. So we're actually going to change this to current uh, sector. This is going to be our 24 bit sector number. Scratch one here, relative position within directory segment, because of course each one to eight byte CPM sector can contain four directory entries. Um, I'll come up with a better name for that later. So home drive, all it's going to do is set the current sector number to zero. else needs doing. So what this is going to do is Scratch one is being used for the the index within the uh, within a sector. So that's why it's setting it to three. St. So nx entry reads the read directory entry. Right, uh, st file pause nx entry and check file pause. They. Why is she? I am typing shift g to go to the beginning of the file, which is wrong because shift g goes to the end. So. Uh, the low-level routines for tracking through the directory actually keep a count of which directory entry you're on. This is how it knows when it's at the end. And these routines do that. So we are going to Add a directory counter. sets it to minus one. So that will be directory pulse plus zero, directory pulse plus one.
check directory pods, make sure that we have not actually run out of directory entries. Actually, this checks to see whether it's FFFF. Right, we're using the invalid value pattern. That's fine. What's a good way of doing this on the 6002? Just follow the same pattern as the 8080. So compare with if they are yeah, that's cunning. They're not the same. If they are the same, increment x and now the zero flag will be set and we can exit. Here we want to make sure the zero flag is not set, but we don't know what value either of these have. And I also want to make sure that LDX does indeed set zero. save a byte okay uh, So our read loop is going to want to read a directory entry into the directory buffer. If the directory position is invalid, that is zero, we give up because we reach the end of the directory. Otherwise, we do some stuff and go back to read loop because I think we're going to have to test this now. Read directory entry is, you see, this is taking this C parameter.
Right, this also calculates the checksum byte. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we haven't run out of directory entries. So this we are going to compare with the number of directory entries here. Uh, if they are not equal If uh, if the directory position is equal to the number of directory entries, then we know that we have already read the last directory entry and we have therefore run out of directory entries. So we just reset the directory position to make it invalid and exit. All right. Otherwise, uh, we want to read the next directory because there are four in a sector So the directory position starts at zero. So there was that. There was that thing here. So scratch one is supposed to be the position inside a directory sector, but that was also different from. file pods here. See, this is not actually touching scratch one. Aha, I have actually missed a bit, which is here. It has actually incremented the directory position. It does that before it does the comparison. Because remember, we start with FFFF minus one. Yeah. 
So, move to the next directory entry. This is the last. But directory entries here is one minus the number. Yeah, this is actually behaving slightly. So this is doing a addition, then a subtract, and it's checking the carry flag. So that's going to be t testing not for comparison, but for greater than. So we actually want to do it the other way around, like this, so that we do a comparison for equality. That tells us whether we've run out. Then we move on to the next one. This is then computing which directory entry within the sector we care about. So it does that by just anding the directory position by uh, to get a value from 0 to 4. We then want to multiply by uh, 32, which we can do with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are all one byte each, so it's quite cheap. We could use a loop. A loop would be 2 bytes to load Y. One byte for the shift, that makes three. One byte for the decrement, that makes four. Two bytes for the branch, that makes six. And we still need the CLC, that makes seven. So this is in fact smaller. So that gives the offset within the directory sector. Uh, we're not going to do anything just yet, we're going to add this code later, but the big thing we need to do now is if the offset is zero, this means this is the first directory entry in the sector, and therefore we actually have to read in that sector. So, so if the offset is zero, we actually have to like do work. So uh, we call track sec. What does this do? This calculates the track and sector that the desired block number is in. Uh, we're going to be using. So this starts with, is file pause used for anything other than directory stuff? Yes, it is. Hmm. Hmm. Not a 
actually sure actually no I don't think it is okay so So we want some code to calculate the sector of the DRENT we care about. And the DRENT is the one specified in directory pos. Now this is combined code with file access. Uh, because there's also block number, which is a 16-bit block. So what our code is going to do is So this is where using blocks should make things so much simpler. So we're going to load the load the directory count into XA. We then want to Shift it right by two. Uh, hang on, we want to get the block number. But the block number varies I mean the number of directory entries per block varies is this actually talking about sectors not blocks I think it is you see it says here move sector number into BC yeah So this gives us a sector number in XA. So we're going to store that in current sector plus zero, current sector plus one, and the high byte is of course going to be a zero. All right. And the rest of this code is to do with computing the track and sector number. And we don't need any of this because we're not doing that. That's why I wanted to use absolute sectors. Right, I actually thought this code was going to convert the file pause to a block number and then the block number to a sector, but no, it's not. It's just going straight to sectors. Okay, so we have calculated the appropriate sector. Uh, dear read will then read a directory entry.
in order to do this, we have to set the DMA address to be the directory buffer. Uh, of course, this means that we will overwrite any user-specified DMA address. So we're going to need to save that. So uh, what's that called? Directory buffer. Because this is this is a pointer. One, this is going to be BIOS, set DMA, JSR call BIOS. Okay. is going to be a routine for actually reading from the current sector. Actually, let's inline this. So, this is the code that actually reads the uh, the sector. So the first thing we need to do is to tell the BIOS what uh, where we want it to put the data. And then we actually want to do the read. OK, so this is not actually going to do any work, but there should actually be enough code here
to iterate through the directory. How big is our BDOS? 500 bytes. Uh, 8080, the 8080 BDOS was 3.5k, so we're actually doing reasonably well. So, let's give it a try and see what happens. One nine oh three is our BDOS entry point. Go break. Right. We are here. So store the BIOS entry point, update the memory region. Yes, we're now up to two pages, you see, ADC two. Set the here we go. Uh, we're now in entry exit, so we reset the stack and we try and reset the disk. Let's go in here, we're now here. So we first thing is to reset any of the transient state. X, I think. Why is that there? This is supposed to be resetting to zero, so I think I need that. Ah, right, x was zero from here, but we can't rely on that because reset disk is going to be called from elsewhere. Okay, anyway, this is going to uh, it's going to fill the state with garbage at the moment. So let's go again. Uh, where did I put the, there it is. Reset. Go. And we were at to see. Okay. Here. Yeah. Right, load A with zero and we loop. Wait, what? PL. Why did that not loop? Okay, branch and result branch. Branches if n is zero, which it should have been. Does DEY set n? Yes, it does. Actually, I think that worked. Uh, it's just that the n command in the debugger skips over loops. I have to be careful of that one. Let me take a look at the... Yeah, so it has actually reset all this stuff to zero. Okay, so we have got to here. We are selecting the active drive. So we fetch the active drive, which is zero. We select it. Carry should be clear. It's not, it is set. So 
but in fact that is going to error out. So let's try that one again. One A three D. Be nice if this had a step backwards. Yeah. Uh, the debugger I normally use for C and C does actually have a step backwards, and it's incredibly useful. All right, we're in the BIOS. So this is the jump table. We are here. Compare with zero. Compare A with zero. Uh, A is zero. Okay. We're here. We are returning, we are not clearing the carry. That's better. We are here. Copy the DPH into local storage. There are 15 bytes of it. Copied. Copy the DPB into local storage. The DPB is uh, now in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 5, BF. That looks like the right kind of address. That's a DPB, all right. OK. And loop. And exit. We are. Here. So decide if the drive was already logged in. We load the vector, the login vector, into AX, which is all zeros. We load the active drive into Y, which is also a zero. And we start shifting. So we store that into temp, increment Y to a one, decrement Y again, it sets the flags, if it is B N E that should be B E Q and that should be B E Q two. Okay, one A six B. Okay, so if it's zero, then exit to 1875, reload X, A and X, and return. We are now here. Uh, four and memory locations four and five contain the current login vector. These are both zeros. So we rotate four to so that puts the bottom bit into carry. The carry is clear. This means it's not logged in. We now update the login vector. So the login vector is at one AAD. 
the active drive and we are now in set bit. So if we look at 1AAD, these two bytes is the, are the login vector. So there is our one. No, it's not. No, it's not. These are wrong. One A nine five. We're at. bother trying to clear the breakpoints. 1A95. Right, we have put a 1 into there. So we now try and shift it. And it's garbage. Why is it garbage? Because shift L shifts the value in XA, not the value in temp1. So we actually want uh, like so. So we're actually shifting XA left by zero byte, the zero bits, which should leave. Now we've done it. <laughs> no, that is still wrong. Honestly. Imagine doing this on a real machine. Wow. Okay. Right, that looks better. So we now have uh, here is the value that we're going to or into the bit field. Here is a pointer to the actual bit field. So we now do the Oring. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Increase by y. Yep. Okay. So now, if we look at one a a a, which is where our bit field is, we see a one. That's correct. Right. We are now here. We are zeroing the bitmap. So the nut blocks on disk. are in AX, which is 9F. We are rounding up by adding 7. Or rather, we round up by adding one less than the value we're rounding by. The shift R here is actually doing the division afterwards. So by adding 7, we make sure that the value at the end of shift R is correctly rounded. Seven. That thing goes from nine F to A six. Here, carry is not set. Uh, why is that stopped? Uh, 
that's not right. Uh, 195F we want to go to. Okay. So this should go to right. Ah, ah, I forgot to actually put a label in. That was stupid. That's actually missing out huge great swathes of code. Okay. Right, that's better. We're now here. So our value is 00A6 divide by 8. That gives us really 00A6? This is also not right. So let's do that again. We want to stop at 195F. Okay, so we are in we're shifting X A right by three. Store, store, increment, decrement. Okay, we're actually doing the shift now. Shift right, jump. Shift right, jump. Shift right, jump. End of loop. So zero, one, two, three, four. One, four, oh, oh, it should be. So load A with four, and load X with five, and we're here. That's correct. So why were we confused earlier? So we should be here. So this is putting the bitmap pointer in. So this is the number of bytes 0667 is the bitmap, which currently happens to be all zeros. So here is our big zeroing loop. Right to zero. Increment the pointer not one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Uh, so that's incremented the value, but the carry bit didn't get reset. 
because increment does not set carry it sets zero so if if we do the increment and the zero flag is not is set then we've just done the rollover so this needs to be an any and this needs to be an any okay we're at 1978 I am just going to restart the emulator so that we can get rid of all the breakpoints. Right, 1978. Okay, that's better. Now we decrement the count. Yeah, yeah. I'm going check for a zero. Okay, let's just uh, so let's skip past to the end of the end of the loop <laughs> that seems wrong yeah we've just scribbled all over our code well for a start this is now wrong uh, we have decremented the count, which means that rollover happened when the value went to FF, and we have no bit for that. So we are going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. like so. Yeah, because ADC will actually set the carry flag. Um, actually, set carry SBC1 I think we want carry set here. Do we? I always get uh, carry and subtract muddled. It also doesn't help that different CPUs handle the carry flag and subtract differently. Last. 
Uh, yes, I've lost the breakpoint. So I don't actually know where to stop. Well, at least our code is still there, which is a good thing. Right, here is our subtract, 197E. Reset. Boot. 197E. So, A is 14, as we expected. A is now 13, carry is set. So we, yeah, we're now here. Here is our count, which is 13. And the end of the loop is now at 198D. Go. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we are at the end of the loop. We're now here. So initialize the bitmap within the directory. It just copies a couple of values. That's not right. That's storing it to the temporary location. Oh, no, no, this is actually storing the address of the bitmap in temp, which is correct, which is at 0667, uh, which is empty. So we are now here. We're initializing from the two bytes there. So load, store, decrement, loop. Load, store, decrement. Yep. So now we home the drive. Which just zeroes the current sector. Done. Reset the directory position which is even simpler, done, read the directory entry. Okay. Check to see if this is the last directory entry. So we read the directory position, which is at 1AB1, which is FF as we expected. So this should not be the number of directory entries, which is 1ACE, which is 3F. Yes. Okay, they are not the same. So we are. I missed a label again. That should be here. 19B9. B9. We are we are we should have just jumped to here but that's an ink. I forgot to save the file that's why. Again. Right. So 
step we are here okay increment we move to the next dear end the index is currently ff so we're now at position zero so we calculate the which entry within the sector we're in which is zero we multiply it by five uh, the value is not zero we don't have a valid sector therefore we need to calculate the dear end sector which is this so get the directory position into AX shift left by 2 still 0 as we expected write it to the current sector right we're now here set the directory buffer which is the value at 1abf which is 05d7 and if we look at that we should see zeros call set dma call read sector which is here so 1abb is our sector number which is a zero we call the BIOS we are here well we're in the dispatch now we're here we set the sector pointer to a temporary and we copy it into 05d4 done back in the BDOS we now actually perform the read back into the BIOS We initialize the control block. So first we clear it. So, so here is our control block, all zeros. We now initialize it. So take the file handle, stash it there. Uh, the DMA address, stash it, stash it stash all the things copy the sector number with a loop we are here this is then going to uh, I just wonder whether this code is right because this is supposed to write three bytes to one byte higher than it should be. So yeah. So this should actually be plus ten. Hang on, is it? Yes, and this should be a nine. Okay. Break five two four. Continue. Uh, that wasn't so hot. Five two four. Okay. This is all zeros, so uh, no real knowing what it's doing. But we then shift right. That should be a X. Five two four.
four. And we're here. Function code three. Call Oz GBBP. And we get an error. It threw. Uh, channel open. Really? So is this complaining that the channel is shouldn't be open? So you see, it then just prints the. Oh, just says channel. Uh, that means it's an invalid channel. The file handle is wrong. So let's just try that again. Have to reset. Uh, sorry, I managed to get the. Okay, so we're now over here. So if we look at this code, we can see that our control block is at 67B. That doesn't. Yeah, okay, that looks reasonable. So we've got a file handle of 60. Seems big. The destination address of 5D7. That's a 32 bit address. Uh, size to transfer of 128. You see there's an 80 there. Offset of 0. I think. I think we are storing the wrong file handle. Uh, on on exit, A is the handle of the opened file. So that is, does actually seem to be the right file handle. Okay, well, there's a way to do that. So if we, uh, where did it, yeah. the, the key map on the BBC Micro is not the same as on my keyboard. Right, so six zero, yeah. So what we've done, we've opened the file that returns the file handle and we see it is actually the value we asked for. I bet, I bet <laughs> we have completely forgotten to set the uh, the control block address. You need to pass that in in registers. That ain't gonna help. If I can find the code. There we go. So that wants to be OSG BPB block Okay, so
Um, I think that's actually working, but I need to get a better breakpoint. Uh, FFD1. Uh, so, break for F5. Continue. Okay. So here is uh, we've stopped just at this line of code. So we can see that the control block address is set to 67F. Yeah, well, this is in fact the second time through. So we have file handle, destination buffer, length offset, and you see we've already added one to it. So we should be able to look in here and see, there we are. 128 bytes to directory entry that we have read from the disk. So if we do that again, there's the next 128 bytes, and again, the next, and we should eventually, oh, there's actually quite a lot of these because they're 128 byte sectors. See, I would kind of expect this to have stopped by now. Yeah, I think there's something wrong in the BDOS here. Okay, yeah, so let's reset this. Uh, yeah. I still have muscle memory from programming this thing ages ago. Debugger. Break 1903, continue, boot. Okay, we want to find uh, actually want to find login drive. Let's find that ADC seven that looks. There we go, there is our ADC7, here is our zero loop, and then there's four JSRs in a row, there, and then we this jumps back to 19B2, now that jumps forwards, this is the one that jumps back, 19A7. So if we break at 197 and go, we are now here. So we read a directory entry. Uh, this should have read an entry into 05B3, was it? That's not what I wanted to do. Ah. Here it is. Here's the buffer. But actually, it doesn't look starting at the byte before NOP here. Okay, so we have read a directory entry. We now check the directory position. here and our directory position should be zero so we expect 
these to be the same. That, uh, yep. So they are the same. Is this code completely garbage? Yes, it is complete garbage. This just doesn't work, that's why. Uh, right, that's better. Okay, read a block. Read a block, do the comparison. They are the same, therefore increment x and only if both bytes were ff will the result be zero. So that gives us a non-z result. So we end up not taking the branch and jumping back. So if you put a breakpoint at 19b2 and continue this should read all the sectors. And stop at one line B2. Excellent. And then we halt. Okay, well. That took long enough, but we are now successfully iterating through the directory. We are not computing the bitmap yet, but this has been a while and I want to go and have lunch, so I'm going to call it here. That's a good chunk of code, and we've done a whole bunch of primitives that we're going to be using for the rest of it, like all this stuff about iterating through the directory. This will be used everywhere. Uh, whenever we want to do anything with the directory, we'll be calling uh, these routines. So it's good that these now actually work. How big is our BDOS so far? Yep. Okay. That's good. So I will save this. See you next time.